So today we'll be talking about torsion, but in this case we'll be going over torsion for non-circular shafts. Of course, up to this point, all we've been dealing with are circular cross-sections of shafts that experience torque or torsion. So now let's say we have a shaft that has actually a square cross-sectional area with these dimensions. The length is A here, or the widths. Now what exactly would be the maximum shear stress in addition to the angle of twist? Well, actually these equations have already been derived, which are the following. So the maximum shear stress that this square shaft would experience is 4.8 times the torque divided by a to the power of 3 and the angle of twist is 7.10 times the torque times the length of that shaft divided by a dimension a to the power of 4 divided by the shear modulus so these would be the equations for this square cross-sectional shaft here and and where this shaft would experience the maximum shear stress, which would actually be here at the center of the, the widths here. At each of these points is where this square shaft would experience the maximum shear stress when the torque is being applied. Now how about let's do one for the equilateral triangle. Now for this one, the maximum shear stress this um, shaft would experience is 20 times the torque divided by a cubed and the angle of twist is 46 times the torque times the length of the shaft divided by a to the power of 4 divided by the shear modulus and at these locations is where the maximum shear stress would be experienced. Now there's also an elliptical cross-sectional area for the elliptical cross-sectional area, we have the maximum shear stress being equal to 2 times the torque divided by pi and the dimensions a, b squared. And the angle of twist is a squared plus b squared times the torque times the length of the shaft divided by pi, a cubed, b cubed, and the shear modulus. So these are each of the equations for the maximum shear stress as well as the angle of twist for the respective cross-sectional area. Now one thing to keep in mind here is when it comes for the same cross-sectional area, if you're comparing these, um, these geometries here with a circular shaft, a circular shaft is more efficient in terms of the maximum shear stress that it would experience for the same area if you were to compare with the other these other cross-sectional areas the circular shaft would actually be a lot more efficient in terms of design and not only would the circular shaft experience less shear ma less maximum shear stress when you're comparing the same cross-sectional area with respect to these other geometries it will also experience a smaller angle of twist as well but it's a good thing to keep in mind or to know that they are in fact different relationships depending on the geometry of the shaft. So let's go ahead and do an example here. So the problem statement is, if the shaft has an equilateral triangle cross section and is made from an alloy that has an allowable shear stress of 12 KSI or 12,000 pounds per square inch, determine the maximum allowable torque T that can be applied to NB also find the corresponding angle of twist of end B. So in this case, we're actually given the maximum allowable shear stress that this um, shaft can experience, which is 12 KSI or 12,000 pounds per square inch. So let me go ahead and write the equation for the maximum shear stress for this cross section. So max shear stress for a triangular shaft um, is 20 times the torque divided by a cubed in this case the sides would of this triangle is a and we know a is three inches here the length of the shaft is two feet it's fixed on one end at point a and at point b we have this torque t being applied so from here all we do is some algebraic manipulation to solve for your t and let's go ahead and do that so the torque that we're trying to solve for here is equal to the maximum shear stress times a cubed divided by 20. And we know that the maximum is the allowable. This is the most that we could experience of this shaft due to the material. So in this case, we just plug in the dimension as well as this allowable shear stress to solve accordingly for the torque that can be applied to the shaft.
So the maximum torque that can be applied to the shaft is 16,200 pound inch. In this case, I converted the KSI into 1,000 pound per square inch. And so this is the maximum torque that this shaft could, um, that you could apply to this shaft such that it won't exceed this maximum allowable stress here. So now let's go ahead and solve for the angle of twist. And so using the equation we wrote previously, so the angle of twist is 46 times the torque times the length of the shaft divided by A4 and the shear modulus of elasticity. So let's go ahead and solve. So we get 46 times 16,200 pound inch times two feet. Keep in mind, keep your units consistent. So I went ahead and converted the feet into inches. So 12 inches is equal to one foot to cancel out the feet. Divide by three inch to the fourth power and the shear modulus, which is 3.7 million or um, 3,700,000 pounds per square inch. So let's go ahead and solve our angle of twist in radians. And so we get 0 0.0597 radians, and we went ahead and converted the radians into degrees, and we get 3.42 degrees is the angle of twist at point B. Now, when it comes to all the other um, methods of solving, such as statically indeterminate torque loaded members when you're trying to solve for any unknown torques or the torque reactions in a given system the method the method is still the same the only different that the only thing that changes here the equations that you're going to be using for the maximum shear stress and the angle of twist so just keep that in mind